What's up, y'all? It's your guy, eBay Fight Predictions in the building. Yes, I, I am in a different area right now. I'm actually in, in Reno, uh, so just, you know, serving the vacation, uh, trying to enjoy some life. Uh, but I got to make these videos, so you guys already know. You boy, you boy is back. <laughs> you already know your boy is back. Uh, UFC Vegas 85, uh, Jack Hermanson uh, versus... Uh, Mr. Joey Pfeiffer. I got breakdowns on it coming out this week, so we're pretty good. Q&A stream will be coming out on Wednesday if I have time. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but for sure that will be the initiative, um, and obviously recap will come out after the event. Uh, I'm actually doing this video an hour before uh, Nashville Jumai versus Roman Delizzi, so uh, your boy has been partying pretty hard out here, uh, been gambling pretty hard at that motherfucking casino, so <laughs> you know, you, you boy, you, your boy has been out for the count, but... Um, I'm here to make this video, uh, and, and, and yeah, you guys are, you guys already know. Um, but yeah, before though, I get into the UFC Vegas '86 lineup, and I give my picks and some of my bets, and so, you know where where I'm heading towards, and what you know what I like, obviously. Um, and obviously, when I do make the video live, I haven't made any bets yet. But at the end of the video, I will be giving out my bets, like in like a picture form, and you know, shit like that, and what I'm going with. And that's probably something I've thought out at least in you know in the last few hours of what I'm going to be probably betting on. But um, besides any of that, though, go follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter. Like, comment, and share the video. Let's get this eBay fight prediction nation growing. First of all, before we talk about Big Joey Pfeiffer uh, <laughs> and Jack Manson. But, um, but yeah, man, really good card, honestly. Um, UFC Vegas 86, I really like this card, man. There's some fucking banger fights on this and some lineups I like. Um, here's the matchup that we're the current jerker. Hyder Emil versus Fernie Garcia. I mean, Garcia's a tough guy, honestly. And Emil, A hey, man, San, San Francisco Bay Area fighter. So obviously he's pretty close to eBay. I would love, would love to do an interview with Mr. Hyder. Uh, he's actually, uh, I've never been near him, but we've trained at, you know, local, you know, some of the same local gyms and he's maybe like, you know, made some appearances. But I, I like Hyder. He's a good guy. But here's the thing. Uh, he his whole entire game is based on attrition, and that's kind of what it is, and toughness, right? And he looked really good uh, in his in his fight against uh, Amir Somez or whatever, but a lot of it was his takedown defense and just him being the more well-conditioned athlete. Um, obviously, I, I liked some of the body shots he, he, he had on him, but a lot of it was him defending takedowns in that fight. Um, I think this fight's going to be a way more honest uh, style of what Hyder brings. I think they're both super tough. I think Hyder just being a little longer uh, is, is going to be a big advantage for him. But I mean, to be honest, though, and you know, I know I said I'd love to get an interview with Hyder. I do think he leaves a lot of openings on the feet. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of abilities for people to counter. He's a tough guy. Obviously, he can take a punch. But, you know, you just can't do that your whole entire career. So obviously, he's very super super tough but there are def some defensive flaws now Fernie garcia has fought some fucking competition i mean the nakamura fight i mean he was you know he was gonna lose that anyway um the brady heinstein uh, hey i think heinstein uh fight we all know brady's a really good grappler and obviously the journey newson and newson's like sometimes he looks good sometimes he you know gets knocked out by randy costley so it's like <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get but um to be honest though um I, I just think Hyder and Mill is probably going to win this fight just based on his length. I think the reach is going to play a big factor here. I don't think Fernie is going to take him down. I don't think he's going to be able to dominate him on the ground like some people might think. But uh, I just have a really good, good, honest feeling that Hyder and Mill wins this fight probably by decision, just outworking him and, and just defeating him. Um, and yeah, man, I, I think I, I got Hyder and Mill here taking the W, baby. So yeah, uh, that is going to be the pick. For your boy eBay. Do I have anything on it? No, this is kind of a weird fight. I, I could see Fernie Garcia obviously winning. So yeah. Um next fight, uh, man, fucking forgive me for uh for mispronouncing. Uh Bully Uki, the Zulu warrior <laughs> versus Demir Hazavik. Uh no disrespect. Uh Oki, man, this guy fucking hits hard, bro. And Demir Hazavik is 37 years old, bro. 
That is crazy. Um, obviously, in a division where, you know, as a lightweight, age is very big, your speed is very big, and your youthfulness supports your speed. And a lack of youthfulness, it just goes against your speed. And I, I think it's just a little bit of common sense here. I, I, honestly, um, I am... I'm, I'm leaning towards Oki here. Obviously, we know Demir is the more um, experienced UFC fighter. He's had a lot more uh, competition. He's had a lot more fights uh, than Oki. But I think Oki should be able to fucking bang with this guy. Maybe even get him out of there, actually. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Man, a lot, a lot of TKOs, man, a lot of finishes. And, you know, he, he hits hard. You know, we saw what he did to his last opponents on the contender shoes. Completely mauled the guy. Um, so, yeah. But, hey, it is what it is. You never know. Um, I, I, I think it, it could be a really great scrap, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. But um, I, I think Oki gets him out of there probably in the in the first or first or second. I'm going to say first round. Um, but, I mean, Demir's pretty tough, man. He's a tough guy. You know, it's not like he gets knocked out all the time, you know. But uh, I'm actually going to say second round, TK. I think it's going to be a good fight. And I think just him being 37, man, you know, just the age is, just plays a factor in this game, man. I, You know, sorry, my lips were a little dry. <laughs> but, yeah, age plays such a big factor uh, in this fighting game right now. So I, I, I just got to rock with Demir here. Um, next fight, Zach Puega versus Bogdan Guskov. Um, I, I thought Bogdan got done dirty get, be, uh, being given Volkan Ozdemir in his debut. Uh, I thought Volkan had so much to prove in that fight, and I, I just thought it was kind of crazy. Some people were actually picking Bogdan to go out there and win this fight. Now, there's nothing wrong with thinking he's going to win, but still, I, you know, anything can happen. Now, Zach Quagg, 35 years old, fights out of uh, Colorado, uh, team elevation. Uh, he has specialized in the clinch and grabbing people against the clinch and trying to play dirty boxing and it, it works to a certain degree obviously he beat jordan wright doing that but when he fought medesis bukowskis that game wasn't being played uh you know what i'm saying when he fought muhammad usman that game was not being played so uh, guskov obviously we didn't see a lot in his vulcan ozdemir fight <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i i i gotta rock with uh Guskov here. I, I think Guskov can hurt him, and I think he can really put put a beating on him. Uh, I, I got Guskov by second round TKO. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Ground and pounder is probably, it's probably my – if I see a, a finish, that's what it's going to look like, um, him just finishing him on the ground. So, yeah, um, they're both the same size. Um, I mean, Guskov's a little taller, actually 6'3", my bad, but they both have the same reach, and he's just a little younger. I mean, 35, obviously it's, you know, fucking – it's light heavyweight, but still, like, you know, that does matter to a certain degree. But, yeah, uh, it is what it is. Next fight, Devin Clark versus Martian Pracnow. Um, Good fight here. Obviously, I, I know Devin Clark. I think this is a good stylistic matchup for him. Um, these guys have, I, you know, I give a lot of credit to Martian Pracnow. At one point in his career, I thought he was going to get cut, you know, and he fought for his job. I mean, the guy has a win over Khalil Roundtree. Um, he outkicked boxed it. The Muay Thai master, Khalil Roundtree. Um, and I don't know, like, his, his, his William Knight fight will forever be a classic. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he fought Vito Patron. That was such a bad stylistic matchup for him. You know, he just finds someone that was so bigger and physically imposing. I just didn't think it was going to go his way. Um, now, Devin Clark, he wins one, he loses one. Um, I mean, has a win over Jung and then just lost to Kenny and Um, I think that's okay to a certain degree. I, I don't think Marcin Pracknell is going to choke him out like Kennedy. Kennedy, he's big, he's strong, and you know, it's it's one of those weird things where it's like, um, it, it's such a weird matchup, you know. And I, I don't think Pracknell has any of those um, physical athletic gifts. Um, that's going to be an issue for Devin Clark, you know? So I, I think Devin Clark puts the wrestling clinic on him. Uh, I actually have Clark here by decision. Do I have anything on this fight? No, I don't. I'm not too confident uh, in, in this matchup, but but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, next fight, Daniel Marcos versus Corey Lang. Um, this should be an interesting one. Um, I, I, think, I think Marcos should win this. I don't think Marcos won his Davy Grant fight, for God's sakes, I'll say that. But Corey Lang is just, he's such a hittable guy. Um, 
and he's a good fighter and he can make fights competitive but he has a hard time actually winning fights like that cody durden fight he should have won man that was so stupid bro like I, i'll never forgive him for that um he did a lot of dumb stuff i mean he's coming off a win over johnny Munoz jr which is good but i mean this is a completely different stylistic matchup johnny Munoz jr is a wrestler um daniel marcos is here looking to uh, get knees in the clinch you know more tie you up you know <laughs> and uh get you out of there and I, I, even though i thought david grant beat him uh i think this matchup actually favors marcos and i, I think it's also uh, a step down in competition uh come, coming from david grant so i i think i i think dan marcus wins this year by decision should be a good fight i, I could even finish him I, I wouldn't be surprised i mean a Corling does have a suspect chin so yeah um next fight Jeremiah Wells versus Max Griffin. Um, <laughs> I do not like Jeremiah Wells. I I do not like Jeremiah Wells, bro. Max Griffin's coming off a loss to uh, Michael Morales, which is okay. You know, um, that's a good level of competition. Jeremiah Wells is coming off a loss to Carl Carlton Harris, which I fucking love. That was beautiful. That was a great fucking fight. Uh, <laughs> uh, this just pains me. I think it should be an interesting fight. I honestly, um, Griffin's a very hard, hard kind of guy to cap sometimes, but he can win a lot of fights. He can be very successful in a lot of fights. Um, it, you know, I mean, guy, he has wins with Carlos Condit, obviously super passes prime to needs right um Kenan song so and but he's 38 years old but you know jeremiah wells isn't no spring uh chicken himself it's a very hard stylistic matchup but i am putting a unit on max griffin because it's fuck jeremiah wells there's something about the way jeremiah fights that just disturbs me um and i just don't i just don't like it <laughs> I just, I just don't. I'm sorry, y'all. I just don't. So, um, and I, do I, stylistically, I actually think Max Griffin can win this fight. It's not even uh, anything based on hatred or anything based on uh, uh, disliking. I, I, I honestly think Max Griffin can win this fight. Um, the age kind of scares me a little bit, but besides that, I mean, we, we know Jeremiah Wells swings crazy and he's looking to wrestle. But besides that, I mean, Max Griffin has good cardio. Um, he has good, decent boxing. Um, and I mean, he can wrestle too. So I, I just think in a, in a 15 minute scrap, I just think Griffin's going to have way more moments than Jeremiah Wells. And I think he's going to win. So, uh, I got Griffin here. Um, by uh by decision and I, I and i got a unit on him so i'm on that griffin money line i i, I could even it's a tough fight i, I wouldn't put him in a parlay because i don't trust him i don't think he's a lock but i, I do have him but someone I, I i am potentially gonna put in a parlay uh loma look boomy man I, I think she wins her fight against bruna brazil honestly um i i think she's gonna like tear this girl up man she could be a good fight man but i, I think stylistically this is a really good fight for her i, I just think in the clinch she's gonna dominate she has a better striking than her we saw what gomez was able to do to her just smoking uh brazil you know what i'm saying so or brazil i don't know how you say that her fucking name but the special one is her nickname though but uh yeah i just think loma is gonna fucking wreck her on the low so but it should be a good fight though nonetheless uh all due respect to, to you know to loma but, <laughs> but yeah uh i can't wait for it though uh actually I, I don't think i'm too excited for it but i mean in terms of money yeah so i got loma here in a, in a parlay obviously and i think she wins this fight by decision because it's a female fight but yeah uh next fight trevin giles versus carlos paraitis it's a good fucking fight um I think Trevor Giles used to be really good at middleweight, but him at welterweight has just been so underwhelming, and he's just been somewhat of a gatekeeper. Man, he can win fights, man. I, you know, he can beat the Preston Parsons, he can beat the Louis Coses, but I just think these up and comers, these guys that have power, that are gonna chin check him, just fucking dominate. This guy Carlos Barretos, he has knockout power, man. Kind of fights like Alex Pierre, hands down, super like bouncy, is looking for the counter at all at all times and just throws hard, man. That knockout he had over that Mitch Ramirez kid, bro, that was fucking brutal, bro. Kid didn't even know where he was. So I, I got Carlos Barretos here um, by knockout. I'm pretty confident he gets it done. Um, I, do I think Trevor Johnson can go out here, put on a wrestling clinic, maybe? But 
Jaws had a lot of potential, and I just think he's super faltered. I, I just think he's nowhere. Like, you know, like, he was having, he was actually winning against Drickus Dupont. <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, has a win over Roman DeLizzi. Like, he's a good fighter, but his chin and just him going down uh, to, um, to middleweight, not middleweight, welterweight was a mistake. I think he should have stayed out at middleweight. I think he even has a, I, I, he has a good wins, man. I think he does. I think he has some good wins, honestly. I'm trying to remember who who, who he's beaten. Uh, I think he's, he has a win over Brendan Allen, I think. I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I got I got uh, Carlos Pratis here. Um, yeah, first round TKO though. Uh, next fight, Ihor Pretoria, ah, oh, Ihor versus Roberto or no versus Robert Bezecchi or whatever. Uh, I I think Ihor is not good, man. He, he his his whole legacy. I mean, he had a good fight against Rodolfo Bellato, but this Ihor guy is not. not he's not good. <laughs> he's not good, bro. He's not good. Um, and this Robert Bezecchi seems like he has some power, some pop. Uh, I think he gets him out of there, honestly. Uh, and he's at, he's gonna be finishing my parlay that I have with Luma Luke Bumi. I'm gonna have Robert Brzezek and Luma Luke Bumi uh, in a parlay. And I, I think he wins this fight, man. I, it is a short notice fight for Pretoria, but um, you know what I'm saying. You know, obviously, short notice power boost is is in in the works. But I, I think this Robert guy, he gets this guy out of here, and, and Ihor Pretoria is gonna be cut. Pretty pretty soon, so uh, I think Bezek actually by third round TKO he gets him out. Of it. I mean, the Ehor guy, he's a tough, he's a tough guy, but I just can't forgive him for dancing on Shogun like that. It's just it's unforgivable. Um, but yeah, next fight, a really good fight in the lightweight division: Michael Johnson versus Darius Flowers. Man, obviously we saw Darius Flowers fight um, Mr. Jake Matthews. Um, Darius Flowers fights like an idiot. Michael Johnson fights like an idiot too and they fight like an idiot in different aspects of fighting like an idiot uh <laughs> in the school in the agency of fighting like an idiot they both fight a little different now michael johnson is unforgivable he's actually good you know what i'm saying <laughs> he actually is good and he's a good fighter and he trains at a really good gym he has really good coaches so he doesn't have any excuses but he makes little mistakes he gets caught and that's all she wrote uh I, I picked Diego Fair to beat Michael Johnson, but not like that, bro. Not like that, bro. That broke my heart, man. Seeing Michael get smoked like that, and it, it just did. It didn't make sense, man. I actually, I thought Michael won the first round. If you actually rewatch that fight, I, I thought he won the first round, <laughs> and I thought he was on his way to becoming a ranked fighter. Like honestly, I thought he was making that comeback trail. Now, obviously, Michael's had some fucking good moments. I mean. The Alan Patrick KO, the J Jamie Malarkey fight, I thought he won. Um, the Marcus Tekeski fucking masterclass he put on, like just beautiful takedown defense. Um, he, I love Michael Johnson, so I, I think he can really win this fight. But Darius Flowers, he's not technically sound, and he just fights like an idiot. And I. I I'm not. I, I know it's. It sounds disrespectful to say he fights like an idiot, but there's just no way else to describe it. He just. He just. Yeah, it's. It's a very interesting fighting style he brings, and it's just. It's not UFC level, with all due respect to Mr. Darius Flowers, the beast mode himself. But uh, I just think Michael Johnson. He's been there. He's done that. Yeah, he's 37 years old, but he he has been through way more uh, in this fight game that Darius Flowers could ever deal with. Uh, and I think Michael Johnson has beat some of the best guys. I don't just think I know he's beaten some of the best guys uh, in the 155-pound division. And he's shown he still has it. Obviously, he just makes silly mistakes. But besides that, though, I think he, he beats the dog crap out of Darius Flowers. So I, I got Michael Johnson here by second-round TKO. Um, I, I think we see some of that old menace back. And, yeah, man, uh, the Darius, Darius Flowers ain't the one, bro. You know, it's just, he ain't the one. <laughs> he ain't the one. Uh, next fight, Rodolfo Vieira versus Armin Petrosian. This is a very tough fight, uh, in my opinion, for both guys. But um, I'm going to be taking Armin Petrosian here. I just think the the takedown defense that he's shown 
to to a certain degree it hasn't been necessarily the best but um it hasn't been god awful and rodolfo Vieira really hasn't shown me a lot bro in terms of the wrestling and getting guys down to the ground like i mean the dustin solstice win has kind of aged well for him which is weird I, I thought i'd never say that but and he's lost to like good competition anthony hernandez chris curtis so no not any scrubs and he's beaten you know, obviously Cody Brundage in his last fight, but Brundage made the, the, the dumbest mistake I think I've ever seen in life. So I think Armin Petrosian is just a better striker here. Um, I mean, has a win over Gregor Rodriguez. Looked really good in that fight. And um, I think he wins, man. I think he wins the matchup here. And um, yeah, man, I, I, I got uh, I got Armin Petrosian here over a Rodolfo Vieira by decision. So, but should be a good fight. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Rodolfo gets the, the takedown and subs him. But, um, but yeah. I'm, I'm rocking with uh, Petrosian here. Um, and even like that, that Dustin Solstice fight, like if you actually watch it, Dustin was, I, I thought he was on his way to actually winning that fight. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, next fight, Brad Tavares versus Gregory Rodriguez. This is a good scrap, man. A really good scrap. Um, I'm rocking Gregory Rodriguez here. Brad Tavares is 36. Um, his chin is super, super dunzo. And I mean, obviously, Gregory Rodriguez doesn't have the greatest chin in the world, but um, I mean, what he did to Dennis Tulilian, <laughs> dude, he fucking just destroyed him. So I think he can be really, really successful in this matchup. And I think he can actually really, really win, in my God honest opinion. I really, truly believe that deep down in my heart. So yeah. Um, I, Brad, on the other hand, coming off a win over Chris Weidman. Um, he looked god awful. Uh, he almost lost that fight to a guy with basically one leg, uh, and that's just unforgivable. Obviously, the takedown defense is going to be, you know, fucking diamond level uh, of mastery from uh, Mister Brad Tavares, the guy you just can never take down. I mean, comes up could shoot twenty takedowns and just go for zero, baby. We all know it. So obviously, Gregory's not going to show the, the grappling that he's been working on. Um, but uh, I do think Gregory goes out. Out here and just outboxes him and beats him up. I think Gregory's just such a he, he's such a, a you know a bull in there, a hammer. And I don't know if 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 fucking Brad has it in him at this point in his career. I mean, he's taking beatings like Adesanya put a beating on him, uh, Jerkis Duplass put a beat. It was a good fight. It was a good honest fight, but he still got a beating put on him. I mean, Bruno Silva fucking knocked him out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you know Edmund Shabazzian's knocked him out. It's like he's it, it, he's good, but He's very beatable, uh, and it's just a fact. So I, I got Gray Rodriguez here, uh, obviously, by by Thoron TKO. I think he finishes him to the body. Um, I think he gets him out of there, uh, and you know, he breaks him down. I, just, I truly, truly believe that. So, yeah. Um, and in the co-main event, um, I do have a unit on Andre Philly. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm on that Andre Philly money line. I, I just, I have a good feeling Andre Philly wins this fight. I, I have Andre Philly by decision. I have a breakdown on why I feel the way I feel. So go check that out. Um, but yeah, man, you know, fucking touchy Philly's gonna get it done for California, baby. Sacramento's gonna be up, man. You know, <laughs> you, you boy eBay, man, he's gonna be a heavy man. Um, honestly, I just think stylistically it's a good matchup for Andre. I, I, I think Danny is a good fighter. Don't get it twisted, but, um, I, I do think he's beatable, and I don't think he's unbeatable. Uh, and I think Philly can do it. I think it's his time to break out finally in, the, in those top 15 rankings in, as a featherweight. Uh, I got one unit on Philly. Um, you know, obviously dog money, so I got to get on that real quick. So, yeah. So, I think uh, right now, in terms of bets, before we talk about the main event, I think I got Philly, um, and I got my I got my parlay of Robert Bezek and Loma look boomy and yeah so hopefully um you know those things work out obviously so yeah <laughs> but yeah in the main event though uh Jack Hermanson versus big Joey Pfeiffer I got Joe Pfeiffer by throw Ron TKO I think he gets uh Hermanson out of there I do have a breakdown in it where I go more in depth on why the way I feel I got a unit on big Joey Pfeiffer here I'm hitting his money line um I don't know if I'm going to be very specific I might take him by you know, I might take him by TKO or, or KO uh, if, if I see that prop there, but I just have to see the lines. But for sure, I, I have Joey Pfeiffer here um, getting the W. And yeah, I think he's fucking, he's probably one of the bigger locks of the week, man. I, I think main event wise, in terms of all the main events we've gotten, um, 
they, I think Joe Pfeiffer's just a fucking lock, man. I, I just think stylistic. This is a bad matchup for for Jack, man. I really do. I think leg kicks are going to be big for him, um, and I think he's going to have to attack that leg as much as he can. But grappling wise, I think they're going to cancel out. And in boxing range, I think Joe Pfeiffer's going to fucking wreck his ass. So that's how I feel. But it's a good fight though, and I, I can't wait for it. But yeah. That is it, though, uh, for your boy eBay fight predictions. Uh, obviously, go check out the breakdown that will be coming out this week. Obviously, I'll try to get a Q&A stream because um, vacation is not done. Uh, I did four days in Reno. Uh, I got to do two days in Tahoe. So <laughs> be, I'll be shivered. I'll be, oh, <laughs> be code. Be doing that Q&A stream code. But, yeah. Um, but, hey, it is what it is at the end of the day. And yeah, man, uh, that is it uh, for the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share the video. Let's get this eBay fight prediction nation growing. I uh, love y'all, and goodbye to your boy eBay. And yeah, you guys are going to see some of the bad sense of the stuff. And, da -da 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 -da. and can't wait for UFC Vegas 85. Can't wait to watch it. So yeah, love y'all. Goodbye. It's your boy. I'm out of here. YouTube channel. I'm going to go check that out. And, uh,. Hey, subscribe to eBay's Fight Prediction. Let's keep the eBay Fight Predictions nation growing.